Hello folks, Boda Bob here. Hey, it's the day after Thanksgiving and I thought I'd get some work done on the Kubota. It's uh, time to get the servicing done for the fall and uh, get ready for winter. Any uh, snow plowing and other uh, tough chores like that that the tractor has to go through. And plus, I just like to make it a routine. Every, uh, every fall, I uh, replace the fuel filters. I replace the uh, oil filter, the air filter, and the hydraulic trans, um, excuse me, the hydrostatic transmission filter. So um, it's, it doesn't need the uh, transmission fluid uh, drained and uh, I don't need new transmission fluid. That's what I'm trying to say. So um, we're just gonna swap out the filter. I'm gonna get started by taking these three quarter inch, the bolts are three quarter inch. The uh, size of the bolt is half inch. You'll need a uh, three quarter inch wrench. Well, at least this is how I do it. And uh, I have an impact wrench. So I'm gonna put my back to the camera, reach down in here. Before I took the, the grill guard off, I did remove the uh, loader. That makes it a little easier. So the next part is going to be disconnect the, well, actually I'm gonna remove the headlights from the socket, disconnect the uh, wire from the bracket in there, and then we're going to uh, remove the uh, upper bonnet. That's four bolts. And that's just to uh, turn the light bulbs in the socket and they'll come right out. And if memory serves me, that'll be a 14 millimeter. Let's see, 13 millimeter. 13 millimeters. And what I got here is the new um, wrench, the ratchet that I uh, got from Big Daddy on his giveaway for when he reached 1,000. I told you I'd use it, Micah. What I did is I removed the headlamps from the uh, headlamp assembly. And there's four bolts in here that hold the hood or the bonnet. Okay, once you have those four screws removed, it's just a matter of lifting it up and setting it aside so you don't step on it and break it. All right, once you have the uh, upper bonnet off, you'll want to remove the lower bonnet. Simply loosen these two and slide it forward. Set this aside so you don't break it. First thing we're going to do is the air filter, and you access it through this canister up here on the firewall or on the radiator support. And that is pretty dirty. I'm gonna get the compressor and blow this out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, time for service. Next step, I'm going to change the oil filter. And this is the kind of wrench I use. And I have something called Forma Funnel. Just type in Forma Funnel on uh, Amazon and you'll find this. Basically, it's a piece of lead that's covered in a, a rubber. And I'm going to use that to try to minimize my spillage. And that came off real easy. Let me show you that. Can you see that? Draining right down in there. By the way, I took and warmed the engine up to operating temperature prior to starting this. Just to get the oil warm and hopefully drain a little easier. And we'll open that lid. That'll make the oil come out of the crankcase easier when I get there.
and just went down to the Kubota dealer before I started this. Got me uh, some Kubota motor oil, 10W30, and uh, I bought four quarts. I think this takes 3.3 quarts. I'll just check it when I'm uh, filling it. So when you change your uh, oil filter, one thing you want to do is check the old one to make sure the rubber gasket is still on. See here? There's the rubber gasket on the old one. They can come off and stick to the engine block, and uh, you don't want one of them sticking to the engine block and putting a new one on, on top of it. That's just not a good thing. So we'll take that form a, get form a funnel off. I will wipe the surface of the block off where the oil filter seals. And as I was saying, I grabbed this new motor oil. You want to put a little bit on your finger, run that around that gasket, and that'll help keep it from uh, sticking to the block. Most of you all know this, but some people might come along and, and find this uh, information helpful. Oh, spin the new filter on. Remember, spin it to the right. Spin it to the right, make it tight. And you only want to hand tighten this. That's good. So the next thing I want to do is replace the uh, filter on the hydrostatic transmission. And uh, before I crawl under there, I'm going to go ahead and lube up the gasket with some uh, hydraulic fluid. Again, the same things that I did for the uh, motor oil filter apply to uh, the transmission filter. Initially, I'm going to put three quarts in and then I'll run the engine, see how low it is, and put more in as needed. So right now, it's right up on the full mark. This here is a uh, a undercarriage armor that protects the undercarriage of your BX tractor. I got this from B Expanded, I believe is the name, and uh, I don't know if there's anything better out there on the market. But when I uh, jammed the stick up under my uh, undercarriage and took out my uh, HST fan, this is what I found. This is what I bought. Not saying it's the best solution, but every fall after I take my mower deck off, this goes on. And uh, I don't run without the mower deck or this shield, one of the two. It's not 100% guaranteed you won't jam a stick up in there, but it improves your odds. That's just my opinion, and uh, so I'm going to put it on now. It's pretty easy. Basically, they supply you hardware that to a bolt and actually two bolts to go into the front. You don't have to draw a hole. It uses an existing hole in the frame. And then down here on the side, where the uh, mower deck, the pin that lifts and lowers the mower deck goes in this hole. And so whenever you lower the uh, three-point hitch or raise the three-point hitch, this is what will bring it up. So what you'll want to do is set your uh, mower deck height to the highest level. That way it doesn't drop down. And when you're backing up, the uh, back of it doesn't dig into the ground. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Have this side on.
and the other side's on. Start the tractor, check it for leaks. It could use a couple ounces, but I always run it on just three quarts. Right there, that hole, not sure you can see it. And it's about a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch lower than the full, the hole that marks the full. So I just let that, that's how I run it. Um, sorry about that. In order to add HST fluid to your uh, transmission, it's right here next to the PTO guard and for me for some reason it takes a little bit of effort to remove this uh, uh, plug ah, there we go the, it'll say oil on it so don't confuse that for regular oil it's hydrostatic transmission oil so let me get a rag And it's a little low. Now, I didn't dump a gallon of hydraulic fluid in there. It was probably only a, uh, a pint or so. Uh, this was a uh, leftover. So, I got a call. So let's check this dipstick again, see how we're looking. And the amount of oil I put in there, or transmission fluid, hydraulic fluid, it's actually called UDT, Kubota UDT, Universal Trans Hydraulic Fluid, UDT. Remember, don't put oil in there, put UDT. So that's what we're going to do. It's right at the top, folks, which is good and uh, that's where we're going to let it so with that done the only thing left here to wrap this up is put everything back together i'm not going to uh, hold you around while i do that i'm going to let you go but hey thanks for stopping by hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already share it with a friend and have a great day with that this is a wrap go to bob out